So you're thinking of moving to Phoenix, Arizona, but you wanna know a little bit about it and all the pros and cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what it's actually like to live here. Well, in this video, we're actually gonna break down the pros and cons, the good and the bad of what it's like living in Phoenix, Arizona. And we're gonna get real and honest. So let's do this. everything there is to know about living in Phoenix, Arizona, the good, the bad, and the ugly, then go ahead and subscribe and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about what is happening in the Phoenix market. I'm Samantha with the Living in Arizona team. My team and I work with people every single day just like you looking to make their move to Phoenix, Arizona, and I absolutely love it. We get calls and texts every day from people looking to make their move. So whether you're moving in nine days or nine months, go ahead and give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email, and we would love to help you make a smooth move to Phoenix, Arizona. So like I said, in this video, we're gonna go through and talk about all the pros and cons, and there are a lot, both good and bad, <laughs> things to know about living in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, like I said, it's gonna be real and honest. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Like, it's gonna be kind of casual. I just got my notes. Uh, I'm gonna sit here and just tell you what it's like living in Phoenix, Arizona. I have lived here my whole life. I'm born and raised here in Phoenix, um, and I love it. And there are some things that really suck about living in Phoenix, Arizona. So we're gonna dive in and just get right to it. It's crazy to think that Phoenix has grown so much. In 1950, there were just 105,000 people here. And now we're over 1.6 million here in the Phoenix area. So it has grown a lot. And with that come a lot of pros and cons. But one of the first pros of Phoenix, Arizona, you probably hear about this a lot, is the outdoor living. There is so much to do here and it is gorgeous. The hiking, the biking, um, we've got lakes, we've got rivers, not a lot, <laughs> there's not a ton, but we have Lake Pleasant, we've got the Salt River that goes through Tempe, there's dog parks, there's golf, there's, you know, family-friendly playgrounds and everything, so there is so much to do outside here. A lot of people here are very active and enjoy that outside lifestyle. So if being outside, being in the outdoors, enjoying the sunshine is something that you like, that could be a great place here for you in Phoenix, Arizona. Second pro about living in Phoenix, Arizona is the job market. Uh, there are tons of Fortune 500 companies that have moved here. There are software companies, development companies, um, tech, service industry, uh, did I ever say software? Probably, but if not, software, because it's a lot, <laughs> it's really growing a lot. But there are so many job opportunities here in Phoenix, Arizona, and it is just continuing to boom. Fortune 500 companies are starting here. There's tons of building, not only just in the kind of Tempe, Phoenix areas, but also North Phoenix. There's a lot of land that hasn't been developed, and there are tons of businesses going into there. Tons of new warehouses, more Amazon warehouses are being built here. There's a huge uh, software chip factory that's actually going in right now just kind of across from where I'm at over in North Phoenix and there's going to be tons of jobs coming in along with that. So the job market here is booming no matter what industry you're in and kind of what your specialty is. There's a lot of opportunities right here. Another pro of living in Phoenix, Arizona is the traffic. It is nothing like other parts of the country. So if you've got Chicago, New York, parts of California where you're just gridlocked or even Seattle, I've been places like there where you're kind of either uh, landlocked by the mountains or you know waterlocked by the, the ocean, rivers, lakes, so you can't really expand and the traffic is horrible and the cities just weren't built for that. The nice thing about Phoenix is it was built for that. It really didn't start growing and developing a lot until the 70s and 80s. They knew it was gonna grow and we weren't really landlocked by too many mountains, um, obviously no ocean <laughs> or anything like that. So they can really expand. And so when the roads were being developed, when it was starting to grow and expand, we already had a lot of technology and projections for what the growth was gonna be like. So traffic really isn't that bad. During rush hour on some of the highways, you might see a little bit of stop and go, but the rest of the time, it's really not that bad. The highways are four or five lanes. They're really big. There's on, they're on a, a, a loop system. So we've got several interstates, several loops that can get you from anywhere in town to the other side of the town in 30, 45 minutes, absolute max. We also don't have any tollways. That was something that really surprised me when I visited other parts of the country. I was like, why do you have to pay to like keep going on this road? But like toll bridges, tollways, toll roads, I don't know if those are the right terms, but we don't have those um, in Phoenix or in Arizona at all. You can just keep driving on whatever road you want for free until the road <laughs> ends pretty much. Um, there's also autonomous lights. So in parts of the city, 
um, during the mornings when all the traffic is going one way to try to get to work and stuff like that. The lights favor that direction of traffic. There's also lanes where it will change direction based on the time of day. So when it, everyone's heading down to downtown to work in the morning, all the lights favor that direction, the lanes flow that way. And when people are coming back in the evenings, uh, the lanes reverse, the lights favor that way. So the way that Phoenix was set up, well, the technology that they had just because it is so recently developed, the traffic really is not that bad to deal with, which is really nice. Another pro of Phoenix is there's actually a lot of water here. I know that sounds weird because we're in the desert, but it's really common for people here to have pools in their backyard and in their homes, or if not just in their backyard, then a community pool. There's also, like I said, there's Lake Pleasant. There's a few other lakes here. There's a lot of man-made lakes over in the Gilbert and Chandler area. So if you actually wanna like live on a little man-made lake, you can with boats and paddle boards and stuff like that. We've got the Salt River. You could do Salt River touring. You can do paddle boarding and all that stuff. And there are a lot of kind of rivers and streams when you go a little bit north of Phoenix as well. So if kind of having that ability to go out and go swimming, have a pool and stuff like that is something that you'd like that is super common here and readily available in all parts of the valley, which is great. Another huge pro to living in Phoenix, Arizona is the weather. And there's a caveat with this. The weather in the spring, fall, and winter here is great. Summers, we're gonna get to that later in the con section, but the spring, fall, and winters here are absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't snow. Um, you can go, if you want to, you can go a couple hours north of Phoenix, but it doesn't snow. You're gonna have beautiful sunshine. It only rains 25 days out of the year max and so most of the time it's sunny it's beautiful blue skies breezy so the weather kind of in that fall spring and winter is going to be absolutely gorgeous now we don't have the full four seasons if you want like a beautiful fall where all the leaves turn orange and you want some snow and stuff like that that's not really the weather that it is here but if you enjoy um sunshine kind of weathers between the 60s to 80s in the fall spring and winter then this is definitely going to be the place for you that's it kind of ties in with all those outside activities is the majority of the year the weather is so beautiful people can go outside and be active and have a lot of things to do. Another huge perk about Phoenix, which is kind of due to all the growth that we've had kind of in the past few decades, is there's so much to do here. We've got uh, the Waste Management Open, which is this big golf competition. Like people come from all over the country and sometimes out of the country here to witness that. There's the Barrett Jackson Car Show. There's just like thousands of dollars worth of like these amazing, incredible cars that come here. There's the Arabian Horse Show. We have festivals, concerts, uh, first Fridays in downtown, all around the art districts and stuff. And each part of town, there's something to do every single day. They have like the food truck festivals. They've got tequila festivals. Now there's always something to do no matter where you're at, no matter what day of the week it is, there is so much going on, which is a really cool part of kind of now that Phoenix has grown so much and is thriving, you'll never be bored. Another great pro of living in Phoenix is that the city is really convenient. And what I mean by that is you are always close to kind of whatever you need uh, for your daily life. Even though it is spread out a lot since it has grown so much, it's really developed and it's become really convenient. The way that the roads are laid out, you can get where you need to go really quickly, whether it's on surface streets or the highways. Um, you're never more than 10 minutes away from a gas station, a grocery store, shopping, restaurants. And so you never really have to go far to get whatever it is you need, which I don't know about you, but me being kind of lazy sometimes, convenience is really nice. Another huge pro of Phoenix is just the quality of life. And what I mean by that is it's, this city is very, it feels very different from Chicago or uh, New York. You know, it's not, a ton of skyscrapers were a little more spread out. Uh, it doesn't feel so crowded and claustrophobic. It's a little bit more uh, laid back. There is, like I said, a lot of sunshine. So you're getting your vitamin D, like you just are feeling good. People here for the most part are really friendly, really neighborly and welcoming. Um, there's not a huge amount of traffic for the most part. So there's not this like road rage and everything going on. And people just, there's a huge focus on kind of being outdoors, wellness, and kind of staying active and enjoying life. That's kind of a huge um, kind of theme that you'll see throughout Phoenix. And so just the quality of life, you know, a lot of the neighbors will know each other, even though this is a big city, it is spread out, just kind of within the little communities, uh, they can be, you know, really friendly and stuff like that. There's a huge impact on wellness. Like I said, being outdoors, staying active, and just getting to know your city. It's also very entrepreneurial here. A lot of the businesses here are locally owned, they're independently owned and operated, and there's just a huge amount of pride that people have uh, for their city here in Phoenix. And so just kind of taking that into stride, there's also a huge emphasis on uh, wellness and a good quality of life. 
Another great part about living in Phoenix is the cost of living. That is definitely a pro. Um, again, another caveat compared to other parts of the country. So cost of living like compared to Chicago or Washington state or um, like California, New York, places like that. The housing here, even though it is becoming more competitive and prices are starting to go up, you know, it is a little more expensive to live here. Your housing isn't gonna be your entire budget and stuff. So there's a lot of money uh, left to spend in other areas. Our uh, taxes are some of the lowest in the country, both with our um, property tax. The property tax is lower than the national average, which is great. So the average in the rest of the country, it's lower here in Arizona, but also the income tax is one of the lowest. Plus it's very business friendly. So like I said, a lot of businesses uh, that are here, whether it's like the big Fortune 500 companies or a lot of um, locally smaller independently owned businesses, Arizona is very business tax friendly. So it's a great place for that here too. Another benefit of living in Phoenix, Arizona is the healthcare. Um, you know, Banner Health is really prevalent here, but also we have some of the best healthcare facilities in the country. We have Mayo Clinic, we have Ironwood Cancer Centers, and we have Phoenix Children's Hospitals. Uh, those are three of the most prominent healthcare facilities in the country. People come from all over to get healthcare here. So being here uh, locally, you have a lot easier access to that healthcare, which is really incredible. And like I said, there's just a huge emphasis on wellness here. Um, there's a lot of different medical practices, a lot of wellness, uh, spas, uh, day spas, fitness centers are all over. Like there's a gym on every single corner here, plus lots of places where you actually can get outside, hiking, biking, walking, um, just to get active and kind of that emphasis on taking care of yourself, wellness, and enjoying life. So healthcare is definitely a huge plus here of living in Phoenix. Okay, now it's time for the part that I know you're actually secretly here for is the cons. And like I said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I've lived here my whole life and yes, I love Phoenix. I love this city, but there are some parts about living here that really suck. And so I'm going to be like straightforward and honest with you because I think you should really know before you make the move here. Uh, number one, the weather. Like I said, spring, summer, and winter, it's awesome. Summers, they are rough. It is so stinking hot in the summer. Like June to September is brutal. It's going to be like easily triple digits, like 115 that is kind of the norm to see in those four months of the year and it is hot you'll hear people say it's a dry heat um i call bs it's still 115 like 115 is 115 even if there's not a ton of humidity it's still freaking hot and so that is kind of brutal you typically don't want to go outside even though i've lived here my whole life i still have not adjusted to 115 degree heat so for the most part in the summers you stay inside you go swimming you know stay within the air conditioning you don't go outside too much um they kind of talk about like well they joke about like you can cook an egg on the sidewalk or you could bake cookies on the car that's not a joke i did that as a kid it works you can easily bake stuff on the sidewalk here it gets so hot so that's something to be mindful of if you have somewhere to get out of the heat in the summer even better you don't have to deal with it but if you are going to be here for the summers just be aware to stay inside and keep your ac on another con of living here is the bad drivers um, one good thing about phoenix is the traffic isn't horrible it's not going to be like gridlocked bumper to bumper um, phoenix since it's kind of newer was really built to expand and grow and so the highways are like four or five lanes which is really great they're easy to navigate the city's on a grid and they're continuing to kind of expand and add on to the freeways uh, and highways and everything like that so getting around really is pretty easy in phoenix but the bad part is the drivers. You'll probably hear that Arizonans are some of the worst drivers in the country. That is true. We, we're not great drivers. Um, since there isn't a lot of traffic, especially on the highways, like the speed limit is kind of taken as more of a suggestion. Like people will blow down the freeway. So just watch out because speeding is, is a problem here. Um, there isn't a ton of road rage, but people also don't really use their blinkers. So people are speeding, they're not using their blinkers. They're kind of going all over the place. Um, so just be careful because Arizona drivers can be a little crazy. So when you are here, especially when people come from out of town in the winters, they're called snowbirds and stuff because they come to get away from the snow. I think that's why they're called that. Um, but there's always a ton of snowbirds here in the winter. And that's when a lot of accidents happen because they're just not used to how Arizonans drive. We're not used to how everybody else drives. And then it just kind of becomes a bit of a mess. So just be aware of that. If you're going to move here and you're used to a different type of driver, be alert and be a bit of a defensive driver and you'll be okay. Another con is the look of some of the neighborhoods here. Um, as you'll probably see, there's a lot of desert landscape and there's a lot of rocks and dirt and cactus. And the homes and neighborhoods can be very cookie cutter. A lot of the neighborhoods kind of in this area from the like early 90s all the way through the mid 2000s, 
they look really similar, like very basic cookie cutter homes. You're gonna see a lot of stucco, which is very common in Arizona and a lot of tile roofs, just because stucco and tile hold up really well to the heat um, that you have to deal with here. But a lot of the homes, like I said, there's desert landscaping, they're kind of cookie cutter. So if you're looking for something really unique, really out there, or just something that it doesn't look so desert, there's different places where you can find homes like that in Chandler and in Gilbert or Tempe and something like that. But just be aware, the majority of the homes here in Phoenix are gonna kind of have that desert look and feel. So if that's not something you're into, if that's not something you enjoy looking at, Phoenix might not be the right spot for you. Another thing that really sucks in Phoenix is our public transportation. It is really lacking. It is not, it is not good public transportation. So we've got the light rail and that runs through part of uh, downtown Phoenix, kind of goes into a bit of central Phoenix and then also through Tempe. That's pretty much it. We have the bus system, but it's not very efficient. It will take you two hours, you know, to go not that far. And so public transportation is just, it is way, way behind where it needs to be. So if you're moving here, unless you're planning on staying just in downtown Phoenix, just Old Town Scottsdale, or just uh, kind of downtown Tempe, those three parts of town are pretty walkable. But if you're planning on living or working or ever going outside of those areas, you probably are gonna wanna own a car. Phoenix Lake, I said, is really spread out. It's really big. There is a lot to it. Even though we do have a ton of Uber, uh, Uber and Lyft, those are readily available anywhere you want in the city. Um, and it's not too expensive, but if you are planning on kind of ever going anywhere outside of a one to two mile radius, which you probably will have to, you're probably going to want to own a car. Most people here in Phoenix and in the surrounding areas own a car just because their public transportation has a lot of work left to do. Another drawback of Phoenix, Arizona can be the critters. So, I mean, there's gonna be like weird critters <laughs> in every different part of the country. Here, it's gonna be uh, scorpions and snakes are kind of the ones that most people freak out about. Now, it's mostly kind of in the mountains and in the desert area, plus there's a lot of new building going on. So as we start to expand, they're starting to go to the kind of the corners of the different parts of the cities that haven't been developed and they're kind of developing all that new land. So yep, that's gonna bring out some critters and stuff like that. But scorpions or the snakes are the ones that most people wanna watch out for. Unless you're kind of living way out in North Scottsdale or kind of an out in those desert areas where there's not a lot around you, most likely you're not really going to see those. I personally have never seen a snake in my house or a scorpion in my house. I've seen them kind of around, but the pest control companies here are super aware of it and they are very on top of it. So you can always seal your house uh, to keep out scorpions. That is really common in the pest control companies. You have them come once a month or once every other month, sometimes once a quarter, depending on how often you want them to come. And they've got all the tools, resources, and everything you need to keep away the pests and not to have to deal with them. So odds are you're not gonna see them. Now there is one thing that you will see, and that's termites here in Phoenix. The saying is, if you don't have them, it's only a matter of time until you get them. In other parts of the, um, of the country, I know termites are there and people can, sorry, my neighbor has a motorcycle. Yeah, he just got it a couple weeks ago and he's having a lot of fun riding it. Anyways, in other parts of the country, uh, termites are really prevalent and they can kind of freak people out here. It's really common. Every home has termites and if it doesn't have them yet, it's gonna get them. And so it's incredibly common and it's really treatable. No one here freaks out about termites. It's really easy to treat and the companies that treat them will provide you a warranty so that if you ever do see signs of them in the future, they'll come out and treat it for free. So here it's not too big of a deal, really easily treatable. And since a lot of the homes uh, kind of are prepared and built for that, you're not gonna have to worry about it too much. Okay, another drawback can be pools. And I know I talked about pools and waters and the pros, which if you want a pool, that's great. But some of the cons of having a pool are the upkeep and the cleaning of it. Pools can be a lot of work to kind of keep clean. You've got to balance the pH and the chemicals and stuff like that. Plus there's the whole safety factor. You want to make sure that if you do have a pool and there's uh, kids in the home, you want to make sure they are safe around it. Uh, water safety is something very, very prevalently uh, talked about here. You'll see that everywhere on billboards, on uh, commercials, on like the bus stops and everything, water safety is something preached here a lot because of the common uh, elements of people having pools in their backyard all the time. So there's a lot of pool cleaning services here. So about a hundred bucks a month, they'll come out every week or every other week. They'll clean the pool, they'll balance the chemicals and pH for you and stuff like that. If you're a real go-getter and you want to do it yourself, you definitely can, but it's a good amount of work just as a heads up. Um, and then when it comes to pool safety, there's tons of companies here that will put up uh, pool gates, pool safety nets and stuff like that. There's actually a lot. If you've got kids under a certain age living in your home, legally you do have to have an enclosure around the pool. So so a lot of pools here already have a gate just to be extra safe. So you'll see that around and that's pretty common. So if you do have a pool, just be aware it's gonna be a little bit of work and you wanna make sure it's safe. 
Another downside of Phoenix is our public school system. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the best. It's actually one of the lowest uh, rated for all the major metro areas throughout the country. So our public school system is not great, but because of that, we have a lot of charter and private schools. And the charter and private schools throughout the Valley are A rated. They are very, very good. So if you are wanting your kids to be in a good school, if that's something that is important to you, probably charter or private school is the way to go. Now charter gets funding uh, from the state, but also donations and so charter schools are still uh, free of cost to the students who are going to them. So if you want a affordable uh, option, but a really good education, probably charter school is gonna be the way to go or one of the public schools. We also do have a lot of colleges and university throughout the state. And those are actually, <laughs> those are rated really well. Uh, so whether they are, if you're looking for something elementary, middle school, high school, or college, there are a lot of great options here in the Arizona area. But public schools, not always the best here. Another con of living in Phoenix, Arizona is that it's just continuing to grow and expand so quickly. And while that can be a good thing, uh, it also limits the amount of homes that are available. Home builders just cannot keep up with this demand. There are hundreds of people moving to the Phoenix area every single day, and there's just not enough homes to go around. And so home and housing affordability is starting to really be limited uh, because of that. You're not gonna see a lot of single family homes kind of under the $400,000 uh, range anymore. And if they are under that range, it's incredibly competitive. Anything up to them, honestly, all of it, even the million dollar homes here. It's really competitive. The market is hard to get into. It's hard to find a place. And as soon as something goes on the market, it goes off very, very quickly. So if you are thinking of moving to the Phoenix, Arizona area, make sure you're working with an awesome agent. You have a plan in place and you're ready to go and you have realistic expectations about what's going on in the market, what's happening and how to make a smooth move here. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what your pros and cons are. If you've ever been to Phoenix, if you live in Phoenix, if you lived in Arizona, or if you live somewhere else. So whether you're looking to make a move in nine days or nine months, just reach out anytime and we'll be happy to help you make a smooth move here to Phoenix, Arizona. Until next time, I'll see you soon.